Matthew Russell I like, Wilson. I like the Pastronaut as a... Um, you don't like Dub 70, the Dub Father? No, I like Pastronaut. Dobby? I was very invested. Dobby. I was very invested in the Vikings uh, winning that game on the weekend, and I may have sent some very strange voice messages to friends uh, doing the the Dobby. You know, yeah, I'm not like what? It. What was the Dobby <laughs> voice? Uh, Dobby, Dobby, is that a touchdown, Dobby? Yeah, it was very. That's good. exactly what I would have imagined. Yeah, very, uh, very I think great. We have our open for tomorrow. Fantasy Football Happy Hour with Matthew Berry, served by Applebee's. All right, welcome to the Fantasy Football Happy Hour. I'm Jay Croucher. He's Lawrence Jackson. He's Matthew Berry. Not great footage there. Not great audio either, but we push on with Dobby and friends. Uh, we've got a lot to get to today, right. gentlemen. We've got to talk about... Have you, have you played that clip for your daughter? Oh, I haven't. No, 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 I haven't. The, the real clip, the real clip, which I think is still uh, saved on the servers of WhatsApp to, that I sent to friends is not great either. Yeah. I'll play it off air. It's not for a wider audience, so it's terrifying. I'm, uh, it's I'm, really terrifying I, I'm sure. But wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on for a second. Let's skip the detail there. Because when you were doing the Dobby voice yesterday, I assumed it was for your children. No, no, Just, no. So friend, Jay has friends. three children under the age of five. Oh, no, no. It was for ad your adult friends. Yeah, like 35-year-old men. Yeah, <laughs> right. strange. But now right. the question is, how did they feel about that? Yeah, yeah not great. They, they said they played it out loud to their spouses, and everyone's very confused. Very confused yeah. why uh, Jay keeps on they, yelling. They Dobby, like who, as like is you. America. Yeah, that's okay. As is America. Anyway, outside of Dobby, we've got a lot to get to today. Yeah, we we'll do. talk about who's Dude. eating good in the neighborhood, whether Dak Prescott can keep it going, whether it's time to bench Trevor Lawrence and DeAndre Hopkins in keep it open or close it out. But let's start with the Roto World player news. And the big news this morning, gentlemen, is that Sean Watson has a high ankle sprain, he has a fractured shoulder. The Cleveland Browns, they tweeted out the details that he sustained this injury against the Brown, uh, against the Ravens. He somehow played through it. That's a, that's a lot of words. I'm yeah, not going to say, it. it's a lot of say who, who, it's like, what they write. And it's like it's, a, it's, you know what it is? It's that, Lawrence, it's, a, it's that too long, didn't read, you know, like, yeah. well, I'm, you know, like, I'm happy for you. Or I'm not reading all that, but I'm happy for you. Or I'm or sorry, I'm that, sorry, happened, yeah, and like, sorry like, that happened to you. And then somebody posted, like, that they did the same thing for Nick Chubb when he tore his ACL. So the Browns got somebody with, like, a major writing degree or something because they typing their ass off with that. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, like, now, don't like a to. Lot. Maybe, the, maybe the, whoever it is gets paid by the word or something like that. Sure. Browns friends. Browns fans do True drink yeah. free. It was finally looking up for Cleveland fans, and then this is a uh, this is certainly a tough blow. Um, uh, what was the tweet? Something like at, at so far the Browns have paid ninety million dollars to Deshaun Watson for eleven games of work. What's he got a sixty-three million dollar cap hit yeah. each for the next four years? Salary cap's not that big. It's it's uh, it's not great. Now I don't like to compliment the man, but the fact that he played through a fractured shoulder and a high ankle sprain against the Ravens defense which might be a top two defense in football and was able to go 14 for 14 and win that game is completely ridiculous but yep. he's not going to be doing that going forward it's going to be the dtr show that was also announced it's not going to be pj walker matthew what do you think of the ramifications here well it's a couple of things first off i feel like you know they're going to they're getting a free pass for trading josh dobbs in the preseason no, which they clearly never pass. they should not have they should not have done that yeah yeah, yeah i think that's going to become a storyline especially as you continue to see dtr dobbs. though he like he looked he was promising and that's what prom prompted them to do that that is correct that that one of the reasons they felt like they could trade dobbs and they're trying to do right by the player is because of the success they saw from dorian thompson robinson in the preseason he had an impressive preseason. They liked him quite a bit. He's the guy that's going to be the uh, the starter moving forward, not uh, P.J. Walker. So let's break this down fantasy-wise. I think there's a couple of different things. I think Dorian Thompson-Robinson becomes like a mid-tier QB2 because of the rushing ability. Like, again, mm -hmm. the, the passing is still something that needs to come along. But, like, he is somebody that you could see because of the legs, the value he gets with his legs, yeah. he could be like – like, he's somebody that should be picked up in two quarterback leagues. Definitely. And you, you look at the one game he got to start this year. It was against the Ravens. They got smoked 28-3, to right? So you really can't go off of that. Like, no quarterback looked good against the Ravens this season. It certainly wasn't going to be a uh, fifth-round rookie. At the end of the day, you have to lean on, you know, the running backs. Jerome Fords looked good. Uh, Amari Cooper, he's had g decent games with whoever's at quarterback. So as far as the other guys around DTR, 
I would say you have to still start an Amari Cooper. You still have to start a Jerome Ford. And if you're struggling at tight end, throw a David Njoku in there and see what happens. The Pittsburgh Steelers are a much less tougher task uh, than the Ravens, and that's all we saw him against. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, look, Steelers are 19th against the run over the last month, so I certainly expect them to lean more heavily on the run game with yeah. Ford and Hunt in that order, and we've seen this before. Multiple, when you have a mobile quarterback, uh, when you have a mobile quarterback, that often opens up things for the run game. So while right. we think the passing game takes a step back, their run game actually might improve here, Lawrence and Jay. Um, to your point, I do think Look, the one game they played, right? I mean, uh, with DTR, Amari Cooper had one reception for 16 yards, just 2.6 yards. And in fact, if you average out all the non Deshaun Watson games scary. with Amar with all the non for Amari Cooper's numbers in non Deshaun Watson games, yeah. he's got single digit fantasy points. Now that's skewed by this DTR game because he was up and down with PJ Walker. He had mm -hmm. like two good games, one good game, one bad game, I should right. say. But I'm with you. But I think Amari Cooper went from a borderline top 12-ish wide receiver with Watson right. to now like somewhere in the 20 to 25 range. Yeah. Like he's a high-end wide receiver three, low-end wide receiver two. And Joku's really interesting to me. Again, super small sample size. But in that one week four game that DTR started, he had 10.6 fantasy points. He had a 20% target share. He got six targets. And so... Robin, Thompson Robinson, who is still developing as a passer, could look more for the outlet. Right. I think Njoku remains a low-end tight end one that's more touchdown dependent, you know, like most tight ends are, Jay. It feels like, though, how, how is the betting market looking at this in terms of the fact that the, the Browns, who were favorites to win this division, they aren't anymore, correct? No, I mean, they were narrowly behind Baltimore, but oh, they, they were, clearly okay. established themselves as the number two team. And we look at how their odds have shifted this morning after the news. They were four-point favorites against the Steelers. That's down to one and a half. And people are thinking like, oh, how is DTR only a two and a half point downgrade than the Sean? Shouldn't that be bigger? That's gone through three. When it goes through three, that's a key number. 15% of NFL games end at a three-point margin. So that is more than that looks like. Their odds yeah. to win the AFC North have gone from plus 230 to plus 450. AFC 13 to 1 to 20 to 1 and Super Bowl 30 to 1 to 45 to 1. Lawrence, when I think about this move, two things. One, I think it's really encouraging that the Browns were able to run the ball against Baltimore despite the fact that Baltimore have an elite running rushing defense. And then two, I think that this is a great move for Baltimore in terms of choosing DTR over PJ Walker, just because there's more variance here. There's no chance PJ Walker is good. Like there's no chance he's at an average to above average quarterback. We've seen too much. DTR, there is the chance that he's good. He was awesome in the preseason. He was bad against Baltimore. Right. And also the other thing that I don't think it's brought up, like he didn't really have a proper week of practice that week because yep. Deshaun got injured late in the week. So That's right. I think there is a chance that he could just be good. Yeah, and, and look, he... Or look, passable. Or possible, yeah. It's right. not going to be just, competent. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Competent. And that's why you see him as still a one-and-a-half point favorite. Like, they could definitely go and win this game, and it doesn't mean DTR has to come out doing anything crazy. D Deshaun Watson wasn't. He was playing much better than what he was, but he wasn't doing anything to the max uh like like Matthew said earlier lean on the run game you saw them run the ball against the Ravens they should be able to do the same thing against the Steelers lean on that and and just go from there but like you said we can't just you know look at his one game sample against the best defense in the league outside of his own and say hey th this is trouble but as far as the 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 bigger scope in the division goes like it, it's tough, man. I, I feel like this Deshaun Watson news has definitely opened up the door for teams like the Chargers, teams like the Broncos. I, you might even say the Bills now that they're sitting at five and five. So it opens up the door for some of those other teams to kind of make a move. But this game with the Steelers, with both of them sitting at six and three in this tight division, is going to be big. Yeah. I, I, I was we'll say, there's, there's now like a coin flips chance that the Steelers are going to be seven and three, which is completely ridiculous. And, and they and might be the 20, 23rd best team in football or something, and they're a very real chance to be seven the, and three. The, it's it's so weird. Forty eight hours ago, you would say the Browns have you know oh, a, yeah. a, a pretty good shot at winning this division. You said Absolutely. you know the Ravens were slightly ahead of them as favorites, but right, you know, I mean, right obviously, down. you know, the Browns had just beat them last week, and so, but now you think about you know 
obviously Cincinnati. Yeah. You've got Baltimore. To your point, yeah, the Steelers might be 7-3. and three. Look at the upcoming schedule for the Browns, just to take this to an NFL discussion for one second. So Pittsburgh this week, then they're at Denver, a suddenly rejuvenated Broncos defense that has shut down the Bills and the Chiefs in back-to-back games. Then they're at the Rams. That's not a pushover game. Um, then they're home to Jacksonville. Jacksonville's good. All right, home to Chicago. Okay, you feel good about that? At Houston, the Texans have been plucky. Obviously, home to the Jets in Week 17, and then Week 18, they're at Cincinnati for another divisional game. So, like, there's yeah. not a lot of games where you're yeah. like, that one they're definitely winning. Yep. They right. still nah. have an elite defense. They can still run the ball. As long as DTR can, and I always use this phrase, but as long as DTR can, like, Brock Purdy it, which yeah, again, just limit he's a the very, mistakes. Which is just limit the mistakes. Exactly. He's a very different quarterback than Brock Purdy. It's going to be more running than uh, than passing here. But right, just run the offense. And to that point, again, as I mentioned, you know, Steelers are 19th against the run. The Broncos, we saw James Cook and Latavius Murray. You can run on the Broncos. Like so, that's what it's going to have to be. Is they're going to have to just lean on their run game and their defense here. But uh, again, Browns uh, Browns fans drink free. Uh, Deshaun Watson's injury, Jay, not the only injury we're tracking, though. Absolutely. Looking at some others, including Matthew Stafford with a thumb injury. Looks like he will be good to go. Justin Fields is expected to start. Justin Jefferson trending in the right direction. T. Higgins not trending in the right direction. No. We will see on Nico Collins, Alexander Madison, Damian Pierce. We expect Devon Achan comes back and Pat Frymuth looks like he is going to play as well but on the Bengals injuries in particular we heard from a very animated Zach Taylor. Expect Sam Hubbard and T Higgins to be able to play on Thursday night. It'll be again tough week it'll be short tough um, we'll see. Would you class my trains day to day or day to day? Tomorrow made it through uh, any lingering issues there? It doesn't seem to be it seems like things are moving positively with him um, you know I think as the game went he started to feel better and better. So that was obviously you could see that with this with this big play he made. So that was good to see. Uh, he's, a, he's a ball of excitement, that Zach Taylor. He's you know the anti-Dan Campbell. It's like right? uh, Paul Walker in the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. Which really doesn't give much away. Right. Uh, <laughs> before or after Paul Walker passed away? Uh, I was before. OK, yeah, got before. it. Fair yeah, enough. That's an important question. Yeah. Important question there as well. Lawrence, do you have any thoughts? I want to I want to open up the table for you to discuss Zach Taylor. <laughs> I mean, I just say this: he's a head coach now, and he was a quarterback before this. You know, so he's got you know he's got ample experience in saying a lot of things like this, like a, a whole lot of nothing. Not not much that could you know help us folks. Mm-hmm. You know, us uh, T Higgins uh, fantasy football managers, us Trent Irwin fantasy football managers I'll just say that he's had a lot of training being a quarterback and now head coach with those type of interviews all right has, is this complete your thought on Zach Taylor yeah pretty just, much there's just, not much to yeah I, I yeah, just want to yeah. make sure you've been able to express yeah, all yeah. the thoughts you have around Zach Taylor go ahead uh, Adam can you because here's Adam, did you see Lawrence's <laughs> did you see Lawrence's burner account tweet this at me yesterday P Dubs yeah P Dubs P Dubs U W yeah come on at Matthew Barry say, to, say it to his face P, yeah P, can you please let Lawrence finish a thought on the podcast <laughs> is what P Dubs asked that, me that yesterday. is my burner right there <laughs> I and I actually got that connected to my NBC you uh, email, so right. that's how they caught me. Uh, what did it say? P Dubs. P Dubs. Very creative. I would, man. My burner name would be way flyer than that. Like, P Dubs. <laughs> All right, so P Dubs. There you go. You've okay. heard Lawrence's complete uh, thought. Whatever, that's funny, a, man. I didn't even see this. That was a solid he didn't. He didn't <laughs> tag me though. No, he, he didn't. Ta- <laughs> he just. He just bitched me. Just bitched me. Like, well, he let everyone. It's a bar. We're all to, just to, having a to, conversation. To, to, to be fair, you know, it kind of worked out. I'm a man of very very few words mm. except when I'm talking about football on this show but other than that you know I'm just I'm a I'm a You're quiet the strong guy. silent type yeah you know I'm, I just <laughs> be really. kicking it man so you know <laughs> but yeah that that, that 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 yeah, is my for two. Two. <laughs> yeah, that's all right <laughs> that is my two. complete thought and, and I'm ending it with a period okay Done. well yeah. <laughs> Over two, maybe you'll get the third one uh <laughs> let's look back to T Higgins though uh-huh. this is the big news for the Thursday night game Matthew it seems like well Zach Taylor didn't give clarity there he didn't give clarity about anything but if T. Higgins is out, what do you think that does for Boyd, 
uh, when the other pass catches. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes it viable. Obviously, you don't love the matchup against a Baltimore Ravens defense that's angry, right? I mean, it's it's the second best scoring defense in the NFL over the last month. They're a top seven pass defense as well. Like Boyd had a huge game last week. I know he made the bad touchdown. He dropped the, the what the potentially game winning touchdown, but against the Texans, he had a big game as you see it there on your screen. Eight for 117. He had 12 targets. Uh, Trent Irwin gets into the end zone. Two for 54. We saw some Tanner Hudson in this one as well on six for 33. Jamar's going to do Jamar type things as well. Ultimately, what I think, it, I listen. Uh, if you have guys on by, if you if you have, you know, Chris Olave on a by, Drake London, Demario Douglas, you're looking to fill in. I think that Tyler, I feel better about Boyd than I do about Trent Irwin. I know he caught the touchdown last week, but just wasn't really involved. I mean, Boyd got a a lot of work there, um, but you know. I still think it's risky because it's, you know, they're, it's a short week and they're on the road at a a very angry. This is an important game for the Ravens. Very important for the Bengals. Bengals, too. Bengals too. This, this is, is a huge game. game. It's a huge Especially game. Especially with huge the. Game. It's a, uh, we got a great Thursday night I would night argue game it's more work. important than Bears yeah. Panthers. So, uh, yes, uh, it is more wrong, important than Bears Panthers. Right uh, yeah, the Trent Irwin thing is like a long shot flex play. He caught mm-hmm. the touchdown early and it had you feeling like, oh, shit, he might, yeah. he might be about to do some Noah Brown type stuff. No, no, no. Whenever T. Higgins and or Jamar chases out the game, you look to Tyler Boyd. And when you've seen the stats there, on the screen it reflects who's number one who's number two and then they got just two tight ends floating in there a little bit so yeah Tyler Boyd is the one you're looking to if anything yeah but I mean I think he's like he's, tough matchup he, though. it's a it's a tough matchup right I mean so I, I mean I think he's a wide receiver again yet so he's a risky wide receiver three the only one you feel really good about is Jamar Chase and I think you, yeah. you see a decent amount of mixing in this one as well so uh yeah Anyway, okay. we'll Let's talk get to, more about this game tomorrow as we preview it. And, of course, you can check out all my ranks where Tyler Boyd and uh, Trent Irwin compare to all the other players at NBCSports.com, Rotoworld.com. My positional ranks are up now. I am a company man. Yeah, but that line as well is up to Ravens minus four. It was minus two and a half last mm. week. So, trending in Baltimore's direction with See, Cincinnati. Higgins makes a point well, and a half. I, Come on. Trey Hendrickson is, yeah, is that, that's, well. that's Sam big. Sam because that in the, and you sense. saw, too, Miles Garrett had key sacks yep. going down the stretch of that Ravens-Browns game. Without uh, Trey Hendrickson, that could get interesting. I'll, I'll just say that, like, and again, we're going to break this all down tomorrow in the happy hour. But it is a fascinating game because, to you, right, no T. Higgins. So what does it look like for Boyd, for for Irwin, for Tanner Hudson, for the run game? Other side of the ball, like Lamar Jackson's been bad. Yeah. Like I, I on my way in, in my on my way into the studio this morning, a buddy texted me um, and said Lamar Jackson or C.J. Stroud this week. Yeah, I, 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 like, I'm, and that's I'm like, in the same that's boat. That's a legit question. That's I'm, a, I'm in that exact same boat, right? And the only thing you could kind of hang your hat on is that Cincinnati's defense has been giving up the pass yards recently, but C.J. Stroud has been throwing for the pass yards in actuality. So. And they're playing Arizona this week. They're home to Arizona, and I, I mean, yeah. I, and Arizona's a run funnel defense, but still, you, you feel better. You'd rather be going against Arizona than a desperate Cincinnati team yeah. that knows them well. And again, if you had – someone who was texting me this the other day – like if all you did, if you would come down from like, you know, if you were an alien and you came down um, <laughs> uh, and you only thought that football, if you'd only watched the last two weeks of NFL football and had I no price. Oh, you did. That's why you're one of my friends. You're one of my nameless friends. <laughs> that was in the group chat. Was yeah, it? Exactly. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's a good comment. Yeah, thank well, you. Say what That's the comment you, was. Yeah, it, it's, it's a lot of things we would be thinking overall about football. Yes, but the last two weeks, if you just started following the NFL or came down from uh, – the heavens, that was your kind yeah, of adjustment he, he, to it. I don't believe yeah. that was in the text. But uh, you would think that C.J. Stroud was the greatest player that ever lived, and Josh Allen was about to get benched or possibly imprisoned. For That's right. And, 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 they, and if you just started playing fantasy for the last two weeks and you knew nothing else, you'd be yeah. like, Lamar Jackson no probably doubt. deserves to be on the waiver wire, and C.J. Stroud <laughs> is the number one pick. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. said the Ravens' defense is going to play angry. I think Lamar Jackson is going to play angry because Keaton Mitchell dropped that touchdown uh, in the end zone. Lamar narrowly missed the deep touchdown as well. I think he's going to bowl out against Cincinnati. And, and that over under is 46 too. I don't think like uh, I'm worried about Cincy's defense. Uh, the I ain't worried about either quarterback. 
I think that, they'll both they'll put, both put up yeah, numbers, but much tougher T, for Joe Burrow. Yeah, I mean, but so. T but, Higgins or not, Burrow gonna do his thing. I think Ar- he will. Arizona Houston's forty-seven and a half, and you got Kyler Murray on the other side of C.J. Stroud. Like uh, you figure, I think gonna that's be, gonna be the same way. I know points yeah. are gonna be scored on. The, the, the truth is, is there's probably no wrong answer there, but just it just goes to show you how down bad Lamar Jackson has been the last couple of weeks and just how hot C.J. Stroud is. That It's yeah. a legit question. Yep, let's get to another quarterback who is not down bad at all, and Dak Prescott, in who's eating good. I see what you did there. Yeah. Dak Prescott gets the Carolina Panthers. Now, Matthew, Dak Prescott, he's my man. He's been spoken for. You've been against Dak. You've made yourself anti-Dak. You've taken yes. that stance. Dak Prescott's been the best quarterback in football across his past four games. Do you think he keeps it going against Carolina? I do. I mean, I'm at QB4. I mean, like, I am not a a huge Dak fan overall. But but I I give credit where credit, you know, I don't just, I just don't cling to the ship the way you have with Michael (laughs) Thomas throughout these low these many years. He he reached in the back. Right, exactly. I'm willing to adjust. And the fact of the matter is, is that – there are only two quarterbacks in the NFL that have had three straight games with at least 300 passing yards and three-plus touchdown passes this season. One of them is Dak Prescott. The other is Tua Tungavailoa as well since week six. They're throwing a ton. You know this if you have Tony Pollard on your team. The Cowboys have the seventh highest pass rate as well after starting the season with a third lowest pass rate. Some of that was because their defense was blowing teams out. But the fact of the matter is, is that their passing offense is truly elite four straight games with 24 or more fantasy points since week six to your point he's been the best quarterback in fantasy he's a top five play for me this week against the panthers he comes in at qb4 lawrence he is in fact eating good yeah he is and the knee in the neighborhood he's eating all the riblets at applebee's yeah. he's been the quarterback touchdown one riblets. like you mentioned yeah. touchdown yeah. riblets yeah, yeah. At, Touch- at, at least riblets. Hey, mr b tutty lets you should take you know i'm just addressing this because the applebee's crew watches the show every day <laughs> yeah, shout uh, out mr to b just a suggestion if you will touchdown riblets yeah. that will those will move like you know hot then we do this yeah. every time exactly. right here yeah okay. that just, that's a that's a product that would sell one more saying. quick thing on yeah. Dak. they got they not only do they have carolina this week they got washington the next mm-hmm. they got seattle after that who just got lit up by washington then you got Philly. That's the worst pass defense in the league. Yeah. And then you got Buffalo, who's scrambling right now. These is five, like, hell no, no, yeah. They fixed their defense. They fired Ken Dorsey. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. True, true. We forget about that. And, and let me ask Buffalo's y'all this, too. Let me ask y'all this, yeah. too. DraftKings has Dak Prescott. And we talked about this a couple of shows ago. Uh, DraftKings has Dak Prescott at 35-1 to 1 to win uh, MVP, plus 3,500. Uh, Josh Allen has the same number, but other guys that are ahead of him are Jared Goff, C.J. Stroud, Brock Purdy, and Christian McCaffrey. I feel like Dak should be ahead of all of those guys. I agree. On merit, I think the problem with Dak is that he has three losses. He's lost a tie break to both Philadelphia and San Francisco. But if he gets the one seat, or if he just wins his division, which he can still do, he's coming from a fair way back, there is something that I think Dak has this arbitrary benchmark to clear because everyone's just accepted that he's not an MVP-level player. He's just like the embodiment of above average, but not quite Mahomes or Burrow or even Lamar. So I think he's going to have a hard time, but I think 35-1 to is too long. I, yeah, I agree. 35 to one too long. But I also think that, again, MVP is somewhat of a narrative-based award. Yeah. And I just think he's – if they win the division, the credit will go to the defense as well. Like, he just – he's not going to get the full credit he deserves because they're going to be like, well, yeah, you guys have this elite defense and you beat up on the Giants and Washington and, like, it, you know, blah, blah, blah. If he, if he blows better. out the Eagles, the narrative could change. But I, I wouldn't even think you got to blow them out. They just got to split with them. Yeah, yeah, true. But if, just, if they if win he, that game, like he then threw for three hundred against. If he if he legitimately outplays Jalen Hurts, if they win, whether it's close or a blow up, but if he outplays Jalen Hurts and he makes like some ridiculous throw to C.D. Lamb to win the game, you know, something yeah. like that, then I could see it. But I just I I it I feel like the way the betting market will reward the Cowboys for their season will be. Micah Parsons, Defensive Player of the Year, or C.D. Lamb for Offensive Player of the Year, something like that. Doesn't feel like, just I don't know. I just I feel like Dak as MVP would be uh, tough. I will say this though: the one last thing I'll say on Dak as an MVP candidate, the one positive in his direction, is that he is somebody that has throughout his career done a ton for the community. Like he is a he is a very generous man, and he's somebody that really gives back, and so he's won a bunch of 
community MVP and Walter good guy Payton awards. Year last Walter, year. Walter Payton Man of the Year. So I do think that narrative goes into it. Like yep. that's a good dude. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? For like sure. you, you know. But put it this way: uh, the Cowboys are plus three fifty to win the division, and Dak Prescott is thirty five to one to win MVP. Those don't cohere. If he wins the division, he is right there. Let's get to Brian Robinson uh, Lawrence, who put on his Austin Eckler costume yeah. on the weekend. Didn't do much on the ground, but through the air, he was an absolute monster. We about to have to start calling him Brian McCaffrey. Uh, career high, 119 <laughs> receiving yards. His previous career high was 42. So he was definitely eating good against the Sea. Great play by Sam Howell there. Future on the, uh, Yeah, yeah. And great job by uh, Brian Robinson to finish, finish off the run. But He's got new, he's got the Giants coming up here, right? Look at them runs. Uh -huh. He's got the Giants coming up here. He'll eat good against these Giants. Um, I don't know how you feel about it after that Giants game, Matthew, at Dallas versus Miami. Then they got the bye, but at least for this week uh, against the Giants, uh, I feel pretty good about him keeping on eating good. Yeah, I mean, look, I think the thing of it is, is you feel really good about his chances at a touchdown in this game against the New York Giants. He's scored in four of the past five, and obviously now New York comes to town. An anytime touchdown for Brian Robinson's a pretty good bet this week on DraftKings. Now, 46% of his receiving yards this season came in week 10. You just saw those two plays there that were really nice plays, well designed, well executed by Howell and Robinson. Nice job by Eric Bianabi on calling those plays. But, you know, does that happen again? I don't know that you can expect two long receptions again against the Giants, and over half his points came from those two plays last week. I'm at running back 22 yeah. because, again, I think I, I need to see the passing game involvement more to believe that that's going to be a big part of his game. Again, it was sort of two big plays there. But I do think, I do think it's a game that the, the, the commanders – who are favored? They're 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 like, they're like they're, they're, it's, which is insane to it, me. I they like just, the Giants. It, I would they, say that they just but, lost to him a couple weeks ago, but I don't think that matters. Yeah, I, the Giants always play Commanders. We owe even every game yeah. that the Commanders are supposed to win against the Giants, they never do. Feels like Sam Howell guts out a three point win or something. Yeah, because yeah, like it was close. To, it was close to last game. Giants won. I think it'll be close this time. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor Come, back then though. He's a real quarterback. They did, but the the Cow the Commanders were favored in that game yep. against Tyrod Taylor. The Commanders were like they were like on a couple games. They were like, oh, this is yeah, this is the get right game. For, and yeah. of course, the in, interesting thing about Brian Robinson too. He he's got 20 receptions for 246 yards and three touchdowns. I think we felt like coming into the season that would be his full season receiving numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that he's got three receiving touchdowns this year is just like a plus. Yeah. There's no question about it. Anyway, he comes in at 22. He's a low-end RB2, high-end flex for me. I think he gets in the end zone. I'm not totally buying the uh, receiving work just yet. But in, a, in what should be a neutral or positive game script for Washington, they should be able to move the ball against the G-men. Yep. Okay, our last man eating good. A lot of people talking about C.D. Lamb having three straight games of 150-plus yards. Well, Noah Brown somehow can match that this week with a favorable matchup, Matthew, against the Cardinals. It's weird. A lot of people don't think Noah Brown and CeeDee Lamb are kind of the same player, but you just made that comparison interesting um, uh, quite a bit. Noah Brown, who used to play with CeeDee Lamb, former sure. Cowboy. Yep. Uh, Noah him. Brown, and now um, further south, south in the state of Texas with the Texans. So I think what's positive here is that there's a lot of yards after the catch, and they're also throwing deep to him. Like, there are only two wide receivers in the NFL in Week 10 that had more deep targets than Noah Brown, who got five of them. We're defining deep targets as, deep targets as 15 or yards more downfield. You mentioned the, the yardage, 24 more fantasy points in back-to-back -back games. Now he's home to Arizona in a game which we talked about. 47 and a half is the over-under. Uh, the Cardinals are the 28th scoring defense over the last month as well. They're a bottom five scoring defense. We expect a lot of points in this game. Having said that, Nico Collins is back. Tank Dell is back. Uh, they've been running the ball well. As Denny Carter likes to say, it's a run funnel defense. I think they have success <laughs> running the ball with Devin Singletary. Love a run funnel. <laughs> Noah Brown is my wide receiver 36 this week. He's a high upside wide receiver for Lawrence. N Nico definitely back, right? Yeah. And, that, and, that's the expectation. And yeah. that's, that's – It's Wednesday when we're doing this. Yeah, and that's cool too. Even so, the last three games – uh, Noah Brown, I was about to say Nico, Noah Brown has been in on 72% of the snaps mm -hmm. and 
three straight games. And again, I keep talking about this with C.J. Stroud. They had those those two games this year where he didn't have 30 passing attempts and the numbers weren't good. They weren't as good, right? But when they throw the ball at least 30 times, C.J. Stroud is averaging 326 passing yards per game when he throws it at least 30 times. So that's enough. In a game where you have the over-under is 47, that's enough for three receivers to eat. So, Noah Brown, enjoy the meal. Again, because you, because we, we like Kyler Murray against uh, the Texans as well. We think there's a lot of back and forth in this game. Stroud versus Murray going back and forth. And so, uh, I think what's encouraging is, again, the yards after the catch. Again, like, you'll see my ranks, right? I mean, Noah Brown's ranked behind. Tank Dell and Nico Collins for me this week. Right. But if you're in that range, if you're in a deeper league and you're looking around and like, can I use Noah Brown again? I do think of the wide receivers in that range, that 30 to 40 range, he's got as much upside as any of them. Yep. Yeah. And the key with CJ Stroud is just you give him a clean pocket and he's as good as anyone. I'm not super worried about Arizona's pass rush on the weekend. Okay. The appetizer, gentlemen, for fantasy football pregame on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern with Matthew, Lawrence, Michael Smith, and myself is Big Ten Saturday night. Watch Nebraska take on Wisconsin at Camp Randall as both teams look to skewer bowl eligibility. Coverage begins at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on NBC and Peacock. We're headed to break. When we come back, keep it open or close it out. Are we starting or sitting? Trevor Lawrence, Poop Nakua, and Jordan Addison this week. Trevor said that might have been the worst game of his career. How do you talk to him after a game like that? Well, you know, I, the fact that he acknowledges that, that's enough, really. I just, I just didn't keep encouraging him. You know, we, we're gonna, we have the confidence in him. You know, we're not doubting anything as a staff. Uh, none of that kind of stuff takes place. And, you know, he's the type of guy that, that'll, that'll get a lot of this, you know, fixed. And he'll be, he'll be a part of the reason why you know, we have success moving forward. Okay, that was Doug Peterson with a very Florida golf golf aesthetic there, uh, looking the part. He's ready to go play shirt. 18. I know. Right. <laughs> well, I think you might have been doing that before they got blown out by the Niners. It didn't really seem like they had a plan for that. Game. It feels like, yeah, it's, it feels like he was texting at halftime. When's my tea time? Yeah. yeah. Indeed. Anyway, um, this is keep it, all, keep it Open or Close It Out. Do you want, do you want to explain it, Matthew, or do you want the host to do no, it? No, why don't you explain it? Because we're in a bar, and I think it's important uh, to understand the, the premise of the segment yeah, here. Yeah, Okay, well, yeah. Oh, no, I'm, no, no. I'm, you know what we should do? What? Lawrence, why don't you? You want to explain why it? Don't you, we're going to give yeah. you a, a, you know, I don't want, I don't want more angry tweets Lawrence from Lawrence doesn't P-dubs. know what the segment's about. He's just showing up. Yeah, I just show up, yeah. but I will show up to tell you this. Keep it open or close it out. We got some players. They've been up and down. We're either going to keep the tab open on them to start them this week in fantasy, or we're going to close it out, and we would rather not start them this week. Here we go. How was that? Okay, much more okay, concise. But much more concise than Matthew's Much more concise, ramble. but the, the whole point is because we're in a bar. Get it, okay. keep it open. Or close because when what you're in a I'm bar, hoping, you're like, yeah, yeah, no, keep the tab open. Okay. I'm going to keep drinking. Or what, you're like, no, 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 I got to uh, close it out. What I'm close hoping, it out. Jay what and I'm, I are in Buffalo, and we got to get to other stuff. What I'm hoping is that some people, at least the ones watching on watching us on screen here, I'm hoping mm. that they can see me in the bar. But you never know. So, yeah, yeah. there we go. Okay, let's start off yeah. with you, Lawrence, because you did such a good job explaining the segment. <laughs> I'll start off with Trevor Lawrence. Keep it open or close it out. I'm um, going to close it out on Trevor Lawrence, and I don't want to do that to anybody named Lawrence, but if you're starting <laughs> Trevor Lawrence this week, it's mainly because probably his name is Trevor Lawrence. He was quarterback 31 in Week 10, behind Derek Carr, who got hurt, behind Clayton Toon, who played one offensive play, and behind Desmond Ritter, who played one quarter. He's quarterback 21 in points per game this season. He's quarterback 24 since week six, and he has no 20-point fantasy games this year. I want it like, this is a good matchup. Baker Mayfield was QB 10 against the, uh, was quarterback 10 against yeah. the Titans last week. But again, Baker Mayfield has 20-point games this season on his resume. So I had to close it out. He's my quarterback 20 for this week, Matthew. Yeah, honestly, like I have Trevor Lawrence at 16, and you could make arguments. Like, it's really narrow, na- razor thin against Baker Mayfield, who's play well. Gina Smith coming off probably his best game of the year. Russell Wilson, uh, the Russassance continues. They're at home against Minnesota. Vikings defense doesn't really scare you. So, I mean, all right there in the range. Just to give you an idea on Trevor Lawrence, and I am with you, 
Lawrence. I am closing it out as well. He's had fewer than two total touchdowns in seven out of nine games this year. He's got zero games with 20 or more fantasy points. He hasn't been the elite guy you draft him to be. He's on pace for a career low in air yards per attempt. Um, and here's the other concern on him, right? Under 15 fantasy points, three of the past four. And now he plays the Tennessee Titans. Titans are a run funnel defense. Since week seven, they're 24th in the NFL in terms of run defense. I think this is a big Travis Etienne game. It's hard for me to think that the Titans are going to put up a ton of points on the Jacksonville Jaguars, requiring Lawrence to throw quite a bit. No Zay Jones in this game as well. Calvin Ridley has been struggling. It's really just Christian Kirk. I mean, Evan Ingram's been up and down, but honestly, like, it's hard for me to feel like Lawrence has a huge fantasy game here. So, yeah, I'm closing it out. He's QB 16, and when my love-hate list comes out tomorrow, there's a chance Lawrence is going to be on it. Okay. I still believe Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence. Not you. Uh, you're Trevor never, Lawrence. You're we never start on start in Lawrence list. Jackson this yeah. week. Yeah. You're never so on my hate list. <laughs> Lawrence Jackson every week. I still believe in both Lawrence's Jackson and Trevor. <laughs> I think that the fact that the Jags have had the sixth most drops in the NFL, how different would his season look if Calvin Ridley could just caught the ball against the Chiefs in week two and they win that game? I think that Lawrence is too good and he will turn the corner, but I agree. You have to kind of see it first. I think the breakout week might be the following week against the Texans. Uh, Lawrence, Geno Smith, who was having a very up and down year before he broke out in a big way uh, last week against his commanders. Yeah, up and down is how you is exactly how it's been going. It was quarterback five against the commanders, but again, We've seen a lot of team, a lot of quarterbacks have good games against the Commanders. We expected this uh, out of Geno Smith against the Commanders. I think we talked about that last week. Now they go on the road to the Rams again, who beat them in Week One. Uh, Geno was quarterback 25 that week to Matthew Stafford 17, and it's just. I got him at quarterback 18 this week, so just a few notches above Trevor Lawrence, but it's more, he has more like 15-ish point games uh, along the way. The other 20-point game he had was in week two against the Detroit Lions, so because of guys like, uh, you know, Brock Purdy, Russell Wilson, Josh Dobbs, when you got guys like that, Sam Howell, who's a top five fantasy quarterback now, those guys are pushing guys like Trevor Lawrence and Geno out. So for this particular week, Geno, I'm closing it out on you too. I also, I also, I, I, I'm with you, Lawrence. Again, you and I are on the same page here. I'm closing it out. He comes in at QB 18 for me. You saw it on the screen just earlier when we were talking up Trevor Lawrence here. Rams have allowed one or fewer touchdown passes in three of the past four games. Remember, this is a home game for the Rams off of the bye. They've had two weeks to prepare for this game. I always like defenses that are, that are at home off of a bye, you know, and that they've had two weeks to prepare for the Seahawks as well. Under 16 fantasy points in seven to nine games this season. I just don't see it against the Rams here. So, again, QB 18, I'm closing it out on Geno Smith. He's merely a two-quarterback league play. Yeah. The thing with Geno is that outside, so the first five weeks of last season, he was playing at like an MVP yeah. level where he came out of nowhere uh, and established himself as the comeback player of the year. Ever since that point, it's not just this year. It's the back end of last year as well. He's just been inconsistent. It's just, just these games like the Baltimore game, which is just a complete disaster. He's 21st in the league among quarterbacks in EPA per play. Just hasn't really been happening unless he's going yeah. up against a bad defense. And I think I agree with the Rams. We're, we're saying all this about Geno and Trevor Lawrence. Those will be the top two quarterbacks in fantasy this week. Yeah, you wait for it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know what's happening. Matthew, staying with that game, Puka Nakua who looks like he'll have Matthew Stafford back at quarterback. I assume we're keeping it open on Puka. Yeah, obviously we're going to keep it open. I get it. It has not been great. Single digit fantasy points in three of the past four games. It's been in somewhat inconsistent. But even when he's been scoring these single digit fantasy point games, it's not because he's not getting looks. He is getting looks. He's got a 32% target share over the last four games, even though it hasn't totally paid off. You know, we talked about that. Like he, he had the, I forget the game there, but like he almost had that touchdown. He dropped it in the end yep. zone. Obviously, you saw some some Brett Rippon um, uh, as well. Stafford got hurt during that stretch. Stafford back healthy, and of course Carson Wentz is there because yeah. if anything happens to Mr. Stafford, think about this Week One game against these same Seahawks. He had a 40% target share. He had he averaged almost 22 fantasy points in that game. Now no Cooper Cup in Week One, but still. Nakua getting too much targets, too talented. I'm keeping it open. I'm as a top 20 play this week. 
wide receiver 41 since week six. Remember that start? Yeah, it was great. It, it was crazy. I, I actually have him at a uh, wide receiver uh, 16 this week. Despite you like him more than I do. Yeah, uh, despite the fact that he has one game over eight PPR points since week six. But you mentioned the 32 percent target share for the folks that don't know percentages that's 8.8 targets per game also since Cooper Cup came in here Seattle's defense has allowed a touchdown to a receiver in three of their past four games they didn't allow any to Washington that's because they running backs was getting busy on them but that won't be the case for the Rams their receivers are uh are are gonna get back on track so it doesn't really matter Matthew Matthew Stafford could have you know, two touchdowns and two interceptions and throw for 287 yards. That's going to be Puga Nakua and Cooper Cup. So we're keeping it open on him. Yep. And the Seahawks in that game are one point favorites in LA. I'm not sure I agree with the Seahawks. I thought it was the, I thought it was the, it's the been Rams. Flipping, it, they, flipping back they, and yeah. forth. But I think if Stafford plays, I think the Rams should be favored with the extra week uh, having more preparation time. Matthew, DeAndre Hopkins, weird few weeks for him. He obviously goes off against the Falcons with those three touchdowns from Will Levis. Has a good start to the Steelers game before they start shadowing him with Joey Porter Jr. and then struggles last week against Tampa Bay. Yeah, I mean, I am reluctantly keeping it open. DeAndre Hopkins, one of my favorite players in the NFL. Absolutely love Hop. But the fact is, is that, you know, even with uh, Will Levis, and we, you know, you, you referenced the big game that he had with him, but even with Levis under center, he's had under a 25% target share in two of the three games where Levis has started. Here's the positive, though. Since he was named the starter, Will Levis, Hopkins has a 20 yards or more average depth of target. Like, they're taking deep shots in two of the three games. He's had 13 deep targets in three games. Compare that with the 16 targets he had um, in the first six games. You know, 13 deep targets in three games versus 16 targets in six games with Tannehill under center. So they'll take a couple of shots here um, in a game against Jacksonville where they're underdogs. I'm at wide receiver 25. I think, again, he's a wide receiver three with some upside. I'm keeping it open reluctantly because I don't feel great about the matchup, but I'm banking on I'm banking on talent and him connecting on one deep one here, Lawrence. The talent is good and you're reluctant about keeping it open and that's just going to make me close it out. Um, wide receiver 27 in week nine versus Pittsburgh who allow the six most fantasy points per game to receivers. Wide receiver 58 against Tampa Bay who allow the fourth most points to fantasy uh, receivers and fantasy points per game. So I don't have any reason to think it'll be, you know, better against Jacksonville. Uh, Pretty much from what we've seen so far in the young, very young Will Levis era, that D-Hop got to be wide open deep or he got to be putting the corner back in the headlock to uh, connect on them deep balls. He tried to do it this past (laughs) game against the – but it it didn't work. Um, It didn't work against them. So um, it could be – the game could be because because it's D Hop, he could get that deep ball. Over the past two weeks, though, I don't feel like sweating that out, so I'm closing it out on D Hop. My bad, dog. Over under is 39 and a half. You heard us just that, talk yeah. up Trevor Lawrence. Neither of us think he lights up the Titans, so you could see this being kind of a low-scoring game, a run-heavy game on both sides of the ball as well. So again, yeah. I feel like where do you have him ranked? Where do you have Hopkins ranked? 37 this week. Oh wow. Okay, yeah. I'm at 25, so I'm slightly more optimistic than you. But, um, yeah, 37, you're definitely closing it out. I'm still still cautiously keeping the eye open because he's a guy that literally all he needs is one play to make your day. Yep. Uh, Lawrence, Jordan Addison, he hasn't been the story the past two weeks this, against New Orleans. It was TJ Hawkinson. Uh, against Atlanta, it was Dobby with his legs. <laughs> uh, do you think that Jordan Addison, who's still been able to do, put up double-digit fantasy points each of the past two weeks with the impending return of Justin Jefferson, Keeping it open or closing it out. This, this is a, there's Justin Jefferson. That's a lot. That is one of the many factors. Uh, even though I got him at wide receiver 31, I feel like we've ranked them in the 20s the past few weeks yeah. because of Justin Jefferson returning. I'm going to close it out. Not only that, they're going on the road to play a Denver's Broncos team who's already locked up the Bills. They just held Stephon Diggs to 330. I'm sorry, 300. No way did they get 334 anything. Three catches for 34 yards. So, yep. um, Justin Jefferson returning, uh, possibly, even though he'll, you know, he'll see some Patrick Sertan or Sertin or however you want to pronounce his uh, last name. 
He's gotten seven targets in each of the last two games Jordan Addison has with Josh Dobbs, but it's just too many factors for me to feel extremely confident. It'll be like early in the season when you were kind of dependent on that longer touchdown catch. You see it here on your screen in terms of the first four games that Addison played with Justin Jefferson in the lineup. Uh, you know, a couple of good games there. Then, you know, just the, the one target against the Panthers. That was kind of a, a, a brutal game. But I think, you, you know, you mentioned the Broncos shutting down Stephon Diggs. They also shut down the Chiefs just before. Like, since that 70-point embarrassment, Denver has pulled it together. They're a completely different defense since week seven, Lawrence. Broncos have the top scoring defense in the NFL. There are top 10 pass defenses as well. And, and so, I mean, I have him at wide receiver 34. I'm closing it out. It does feel like if they move the ball in this one, it's going to be TJ Hawkinson, who Dobbs has a connection with. And it's going to be, listen, Justin Jefferson, he's back. They're going to feature him quite a bit, even though Sertan will be on him as well. So, uh, I'm again, Josh Dobbs. Literally, legit, one of my favorite players in the NFL. It's a great story. I'm nervous about this game. I mean, we would still Dobby. start Josh Dobby. Yes. We would still start him. Dobby. I like yeah. the Pastronaut as a nickname, yeah. but like Dobby is okay. It, you can call him Dobby, yeah. but you have to use Always the voice the every voice. single time. Yeah. Dobby. Yeah, yeah, there, you like uh, there you go. I'm also worried with Addison, the fact that he's going to be the third pass-catching option after Hogson and Jefferson against the Broncos team that really can't stop the run. I know they've gotten better since yeah. the Miami game, but like James Cook did whatever he wanted in that game uh, on Monday night. Matthew, Chris Godwin just hasn't really been his year he just hasn't had those explosive games it's been Mike Evans who's established himself as Baker Mayfield's top option and now he gets a brutal matchup against the 49ers I don't know that it's that brutal of a matchup though last four weeks the Niners defense is actually 27th against the pass and I agree with you though about in terms of the explosive games they haven't been there for Chris Godwin what he's become this year is much more of a floor play at least 12 fantasy points in three straight games um uh you know uh, that was prior to week nine. Then it's been bad recently. Look, he was wide receiver 38 last week as well. I have been wide receiver 27. I'm keeping it open. I think that we've talked about this. The Niners are one of, if not the best offense in the NFL. They can't run the ball, Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay can't run the ball. So I think massive volume gets you there between Godwin, Evans, and Rashad White because it's a fairly narrow target tree in Tampa Bay. So given the fact that the three of them are the only guys that are really catching passes in this one, and they are going to have to throw against the San Francisco 49ers. Remember, uh, the Niners here are 11-and-a-half-point uh, favorites in this game. So, games in San Fran. I've got one at wide receiver 27. I'm keeping it open as well. Just Again, again See, more of a floor that. play than a, <clears throat> than a, than a hey, this, he's going to win you the week. I, I feel that because of the, uh, you know, the 11-point favorite thing yeah. and them possibly having to throw – um, I got him at wide receiver 35, and not so much as the 3.5 receptions and 40 yards per game over the last three games that scared me. It's the 49ers defense off of this bye and what they just did to Trevor Lawrence. They, yeah, before the bye in those three games, they were, you know, if you, if you catch me, you know, right after those three games, I'm like, you know, maybe Chris Godwin to give you maybe even a top 15 week, but just overall for Chris Godwin's season, I'll say this real quick. He misses Tom Brady. This was a top 10 receiver in fantasy with Tom Brady. Another thing, so the Jaguars were blowing them out, Matthew. They were, I'm sorry, the Niners were blowing out the Jaguars, and Christian Kirk ended up getting 104 yards receiving. Um, 65 of those, though, came on two catches in the middle of the third quarter when it was already a blowout. So to your point, um, that's how Chris Godwin could end up getting it because th there was nothing for none of those receivers for much of the game. Um, but but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close it out just banking on, you know, Mike Evans, the guy who's been getting it, getting it. But it, it's, it's close. It's a, it's a lot of factors in this. Okay. Tough year for him. Quickly, last one, Lawrence. Kareem Hunt, five straight games of double-digit carries and a touchdown, keeping it open against the Steelers. Reluctantly. Uh, Ten carries in the TD in five straight games. What's more interesting to me, though, is that he's got 46, over 46% 46 of the team's carries inside the 20, over 46% of the team's carries inside the 10. Those numbers for four, Jerome Four, although is the lead back, those numbers for him are 13 and 23%. But look, if he don't get the touchdown, 
it's not paying off, and we know that. And that's that's the important point. Since week six, 66% of Kareem Hunt's total fantasy points have come from touchdowns. If you think Kareem Hunt gets in the end zone, you're starting him. Yeah. If you don't think he is or you think there's a chance he might not, you need to close it out, and that's what I'm doing here. I am at running back 31. I'm closing it out. He's averaging just 3.4 yards per carry this season. We've seen Jerome Ford take over this backfield, playing more snaps, getting more touches. Dorian Thompson-Robinson now more of a threat, I think, than Watson. I know Watson's mobile, but I feel like DTR is more of a threat to keep it at the goal line and vulture it. From, uh, from Hunt, and so in an offense that we don't expect to be as uh, efficient as it was under Watson, less scoring opportunities, uh, more competition at the goal line as well. He's my, wide, he's my running back 31. I'm closing it out on Kareem Hunt. Okay, let's take a look, Matthew, at your rankings. On sure. These. Keep it open or close it out. Candidates, Trevor Lawrence, QB 16, very much on the borderline, but a closed candidate. Geno Smith, likewise, he's QB 18 against the Rams. Puka Nakua, a start at, uh, keep it open, at wide receiver 19. DeAndre Hopkins, more divisive, wide receiver 25. Jordan Addison, closing it out, wide receiver 34. And then Kareem Hunt, touchdown dependent against the Steelers, RB 31. And a close candidate needs to get in the end zone. All right, we're hitting our last break. When we come back, it is last call. Find out which sides and totals we've circled ahead of this weekend. Don't forget, on DraftKings Sportsbook this season, new customers can bet $5 in pocket $150 in bonus bets instantly, plus all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every day. Download the app and use the promo code BERRY when you sign up. DraftKings Sportsbook, the crown is yours, Lawrence Jackson. All right, early line alert. Here's what we're looking at for this weekend's games. I am taking the San Francisco 49ers as 11 and a half point favorites against the Bucs. I think the Niners are the best team in football. Trent Williams, Debo Samuel back. Chase Young in the fold. I don't think the Bucs are going to be able to keep up with this juggernaut. So that's my bet. What's yours, Lawrence? I'm looking at you see the Broncos here, minus two there. I'm going to actually go Broncos minus five and a half. Alternate line at plus 150. I want to make the money here. The Broncos, I think they get this win. They could go on a little run here. And I think that you know, the Josh Dobbs stories is definitely great, but I feel like a lot of people will bet with the emotion on that, not realizing that this Broncos defense has been playing tough. I always like teams at home on prime time. I mean, sure, Broncos coming off that big win, and now they're back at Mile High or in Vesco or whatever they're calling it, right? You know, in their home. Uh, you saw, listen, very quickly for me, Dallas minus 10 and a half over Carolina. That's way too small. What are you, the Cowboys are going to kill them. Carolina couldn't beat Chicago. For Lawrence and Jay, I'm Matthew. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and Rotorworld.com. And I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched. Or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully. Respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.